everybody knows is politics and COVID, right? Most Republicans, according to the polls, are very skeptical about mass mandates, lockdowns, curfews. They didn't like it. Most Democrats, they liked it. So right away, it's politicized. The whole COVID thing was politicized, right? So you got church going was impacted, uh, shopping was impacted, family meetings, everything. California couldn't get out of your house. It was, it was really, really an intense debate. And still to this day, over the vaccine, it's still an intense debate. So there's a new book out on the market called Panic Attack, Playing Politics with Science in the Fight Against COVID-19. The author of the book is Dr. Nicole Sapphire, and she joins us now. I don't know where you are. It's not on the sheet. Are you in New York? Where are you? I am in New York. Thank you for having me. You're welcome, doctor. All right. So I want to get right to this. Um, I have your book and in your book, you make a distinction between being anti-vaccine and vaccine skeptical. Define that for us. Well, you know, it's been interesting, something that has come out of this entire pandemic, that you either go align with mainstream media or if you question it, then you obviously are a contrarian and therefore you're suppressed, suppressed by big tech, by social media, and you're attacked. When it comes to vaccines, this, there has always been an existing anti-vax movement. And it's going to be very hard to convince those people to get vaccinated because they have very deep beliefs about the vaccine process. But the vaccine skeptical are those who have been influenced by the politicization of everything that has happened throughout the course of this pandemic from Governor Cuomo saying he wasn't going to trust a vaccine unless his people were able to look at it. You have um, Kamala Harris during the campaign trail said that she wouldn't trust anything that came out of Donald Trump. I mean, people are listening to them. And because of those statements being made, people may not be getting the vaccine because they just don't trust it. Are you vaxxed? Well, you know, that's a very good question. And the answer is no, I'm not vaccinated, uh, but I will tell you why. Uh, yes, it was offered to me at the very beginning. I am a full-time practicing physician. My husband is as well. He's fully vaccinated. My oldest son, 21, fully vaccinated. I have an autoimmune disease that affects my heart. And I had just come off of a very bad uh, flare up. And my rheumatologist wanted to give me a few weeks without um, instilling more inflammation into my body, especially because we know that the virus itself can cause cardiac inflammation. We didn't. We wanted to make sure that my heart wasn't going to be affected. The good news is the data shows it would be completely safe. But then I fell down the stairs a couple days before Christmas, and I've had to have multiple orthopedic surgeries to repair the damage. General anesthesia also flares my uh, autoimmune disease and my heart inflammation. So for those reasons, I have not had it, but I am four weeks after my last surgery. And as soon as I get the go ahead from my rheumatologist, I do plan on being all vaccinated. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you had, uh, with all that, I'm glad you got the book out, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> so the reason I asked you that question was, but I have friends uh, who aren't going to get vaccinated and they're paranoid. They're, they're paranoid. I mean, and I'm not saying that in, in, a, in a, a way to try to diminish them. I'm accurately reporting. They don't believe in the government. They don't believe in medicine. They don't believe in anything. And I say, fine. I say, fine. If, if you are in that scope, that's your freedom. And I don't, it doesn't bother me. But I believe, based on facts, that the vaccine developed under the Trump administration has basically defeated COVID in America, while other countries like India and Japan are totally out of control. Am I wrong? No, and I do believe that Operation Warp Speed does not get the credit that it is due. Um, we had a businessman for a president who made a very bold decision at the beginning of the pandemic to gamble essentially billions of dollars. He put, he entrusted the researchers and scientists uh, of the pharmaceutical companies to put together vaccines. He said, I'm going to start, manu I'm going to give you some, some support to manufacture those vaccines. If your vaccine comes out to be successful, wonderful. We'll be able to ship it out immediately. If not, well, then we've just blown billions of dollars. But this is because of that single move. By the end of 2020, we had two successful vaccine candidates. And I hate telling people that I'm not vaccinated because I want people to know that I watch the data every single day and I fully trust these vaccines. I think All that right, the, the risks are exceedingly low. And I think everybody understands why you haven't gotten it yet. 
Okay, so let me ask you one further question, and this is a little bit hypothetical, but I'm sure you've thought about it since you wrote a book about it. If you were the president of the United States when this broke out, okay, how would you have handled it? Would you have pressed the alarm? You remember, Donald Trump did not do that. In the beginning, he tried to diminish it because he didn't want to wreck the U.S. economy. Right. And he thought that it could be contained. That's what Mr. Trump believed. How, as a doctor, if you were a president, how would you have handled it? Well, I think, unfortunately, we needed to listen to some of the surrounding local nations that were sounding the alarm much earlier on, such as Taiwan, South Korea, who weren't believing the information coming out of the less than forthcoming uh, CCP out of China. And, you know, while I wouldn't say I would sound the alarm, what he did, he did things right, in my opinion, and he did the travel ban. But at that point, we knew that the virus had already made it to our shores. But it was quite contained at that time. It was in the Northwest. It was, I mean, sorry, it was in the Northeast and the Northwest. What happened at that point was when we all decided to hunker down, so went with the virus. Anyone who was, could, was able to, they left. They went to warmer weather. They went down to Florida and with them went the virus. So that two weeks to slow the spread actually could have had a much larger impact if we actually did hunker down for that time. Okay, but let me ask you some specific. Would you have put on a mask right away and said everybody should uh, have the mask? Would you have done that? Uh, honestly, I would not. And I didn't advise that at the time because in our history, we have never been in a situation where we needed that. This virus in itself is very tricky. There's a lot of things about it that we didn't expect with this coronavirus, very specific mutations that makes it aerosolized, makes it more transmissible and can make it more deadly. Um, without having well, that information, have, no, have, again, I wouldn't say this, generalized mask. Yeah, President Trump didn't wear the mask and, and you know, was not uh, in the beginning anyway, uh, pushing the mask. So last question, you're addressing the American people. It's March. Now, I sounded the alarm. I was the first national reporter to sound the alarm on January 23rd of 2020. And uh, now it's March. And now this epidemic is impacting America everywhere. You look into the camera, you're talking to the American people. You say what? I still still say the exact same thing I said before. I said that we're going to get through this and I'm concerned that some of the restrictions being put in place are gonna have long-term consequences. I was very concerned and concerned in the beginning about long-term school closures. I think that uh, they went f way too far when it came to these restrictions. And the truth is what people were doing voluntarily was actually helping a lot more, but I think we needed a lot more transparent information. And we were just, we were getting a lot of bad information from the World Health Organization. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we had I, a lot of bad information no doubt about in the beginning. Do you like Fauci, by the way? Do you think Fauci's a villain or a hero? Neither. And I think too many people are, are trying to find the heroes and the villains of this pandemic. And I don't think it's true. I do think he's a scientific purist. And in a time of crisis, we need someone to be less of a bystander and actually willing to push back against some of those old guard establishments. He was not able to do that. And when he has proven to have been wrong throughout the course of this pandemic, he cannot say, I was wrong and now we need to move forward. He always comes up with a reason whether, well, I knew, but I just didn't want you to do this certain thing. And that's what happens when you want to twist science to fit your own narrative. Well, he's got no credibility with me. I don't think he's a, a bad person. I don't think he's evil, but he has no credibility. So the name of the book is Panic Attack. It's by Dr. Nicole Sapphire, and we appreciate it. Doc, good luck with the book. Thanks for coming on. Fellow Americans, I am concerned about the U.S. dollar. Huge debt, as you know. Will it stay as the world's reserve currency? That's why now more than ever, I recommend you diversify with gold and silver. And the only company I recommend and have for years is American Hartford Gold. I trust them. I've personally done business with them. They sell physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your IRA. And they make it very easy. So call them right now. Make sure you tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you and they will give you up to $2,500 of free silver on your first order. Since I have been recommending American Hartford Gold, gold shot up more than 40%. Silver, more than 60%. So don't wait, call them now, 866-501-5201. 866-501-5201.
866-501-5201 or text BILL to 65532. Again, that's 866-501-5201 or text BILL to 65532. Bill O'Reilly here. Thank you for watching this video and make sure you subscribe to the First TV YouTube page. Just hit the big red subscribe button below and you'll get clips and highlights of my program, The No Spin News, every single day. We'll see you soon.